Okay, I want to talk about electric vehicles because this is the big change in the marketplace and I'm, I'm standing next to this BC Hydro Power Smart super fast charger loading up what probably is the best electric vehicle you can buy in the marketplace today. Now, this Jaguar I-Pace, the 2019 version, is about $100,000 as you see it, so it's not cheap, but it is totally an amazing uh, performance vehicle, a luxury vehicle, and you're looking at the future of the automobile industry. Yes, it is electric, it's gonna take time, but this is the future. Some of you might be surprised that Jaguar has gone all in on electrics, but this is really the future of the Jaguar brand. Jaguar officials, uh, Jaguar by the way is owned by Tata, the Tetley T and industrial uh, conglomerate from India. Well, Jaguar's plan really is to unseat Tesla as the global uh, signature brand in electric vehicles. And this I-PACE is their first shot in what will be a long running war between these two brands and by the way, a whole lot of others. Tesla, of course, is the upstart uh, startup company from Silicon Valley, the one founded by that crazy owner, Elon Musk. Well, he's not entirely the owner, but he owns a big chunk of Tesla. And I think we have to be fair about Tesla. It has, uh, it's a company that has changed the perception of electric vehicles in the marketplace. And yes, I understand that $100,000 electric cars like the I-Pace, they're not for everybody. They're certainly not for middle-class buyers like me. We are, however, gonna see a whole raft of new models, many of them far more affordable, coming in the next few years. And already we have vehicles like the Volkswagen e-Golf and the Chevy uh, Bolt and the Nissan Leaf. Volkswagen has gone all, gone all in in developing electric vehicles with 25 expected in the next three or four years. Many of those will be affordable, as from, well from Ford and General Motors, and there'll be pickup trucks. This is the future of the auto industry. You're seeing it right now, and it's not gonna be all expensive and all fancy and all luxury. It's gonna be mainstream. The I-Pace. Um, range here, well, Jaguar says it'll do 386 kilometers on a full charge under perfect conditions. Um, I find maybe 340, 350 in my road testing. One of the things you can't see is the battery pack, which is cleverly designed along the bottom of the vehicle to create um, a very low center of gravity. This is a 90 kilowatt hour battery, which is pretty robust, but it's also very heavy, which means this I-Pace, as you're looking at right now, well, it weighs up almost 2,200 kilograms, which is, oh, it's like the weight of a big pickup truck. A few other details about the engineering here. The car has two compact motors with single speed transmissions. Electric motors, one in front and one in back. Horsepower is rated at 394, but what really matters is the instant torque, 512 pound feet of it. The zero to 100 kilometer an hour time, it clocks in at 4.8 seconds. You gotta love it. The scope of the technology story doesn't end with the powertrain though. There is navigation, of course, multiple cameras, Bluetooth, and 4G Wi-Fi hotspot features. You can adjust the car's engine noise to hear more of the whine or less. It's a, it's a safety consideration. You can control any number of things via the car's 10-inch touchscreen. And some of the iPace features are controlled by artificial intelligence, AI. It's here. By that I mean the car learns your driving habits and adjusts the displayed range based partially on your driving style. When you approach the car with the fob, it can adjust the climate and seat positions based on past learnings. But don't be led to believe the eye pace is all brains, no beauty and little brawn. The design is stunning and distinctive. With the motors at either end, the designers led by Ian Callum we're able to push the wheels out to the corners, and this has created not just a powerful stance and superb handling, but a roomier cabin. That sloping rear roof and the hulking haunches give the I-Pace a memorable look. It's an eye grabber. The interior, by the way, is spectacular, far richer, better executed, more detailed than anything Tesla has ever done. The TouchPro Duo Entertainment System is not entirely easy to work, 
requiring you to search through endless reams of submenus for things like adjusting the regenerative braking. The rear seats are roomy enough and the cargo hold lists at 656 liters. The roof is almost completely glass with a coating that blocks UV light so there's no need for a blind and it really does work to keep the cabin cool which helps reduce the use of the air conditioning system which of course uses power and that whole technology, just the roof technology, helps extend, extend battery range. Finally, I want to talk about the driving. This car goes, stab the throttle, and you're off. It's, it's like a lightning bolt, and I don't mean that as a pun. I, I guess it is, though. Of course, in heavy traffic, well, you barely need to tap the throttle. It, it just creeps along very nicely. Bury it, and the I-Pace, well, it leaps into action. The ride is firm and comfortable. Yes, the car is a load, but it rides a corner beautifully, snugging down in flat, apex carving excellence. What the I-Pace is to me is not just a terrific luxury car that's a blast to drive. No, no, what we're looking at here is the future of the automobile industry, and rest assured, there's many more like it coming, and a lot of what's coming will be much more affordable. The, the reality here is that the charging issue is a big, big deal. And right. imagine, like, you know, this neighborhood doesn't have very many um, electric cars in it yet, but this is a perfect place for electric cars, right? I mean, urban setting, zipping downtown, that sort of thing. And there's, the, the new buildings have some charging infrastructure, but nothing like what you need. If we get to the point where, um, I was just reading a, a CME report yesterday about the, the, the future of electric cars, and we're talking about a growth from 2% of the market to 30% of the market. Right. Okay, there's 2 million cars a year sold in Canada. If 30% of the market is electric, that's 600,000 cars a year. Where are they going to get charged? Yeah. Well, that's a BC Hydro problem. Well